do you need to publish your paper just thinking about it stresses you out well stay tuned because i'm here to simplify the process of writing and publishing your research papers or reviews papers with ease so far i've published 33 papers above in different top journals like environmental chemistry letters science of total environment journal of hazardous materials and many more Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Rajas, a research professor at Kamwon National University here in Korea. So today I'll be sharing many techniques for easily getting published in high impact journal. So let's start. When you are starting your paper, be it a review paper or any paper or research paper, the first thing to do is to come up with your ideas. And when you do this, there are important things you should focus on. First, brainstorming important areas or potential areas. Begin by brainstorming a list of broad ideas that are, interest, are of interest to you and align with your academic or professional goals. Think about subjects you've studied in class. Think about questions that have arisen during your coursework or your work or current issues within your field. For example, um, my major is environmental science, so I studied a broad number of um, subjects or causes why studying environmental science for example i did study a course on environmental pollution so if i want to write a paper i'm going to think about how can the environment be polluted the next thing is determine whether you intend to write either a review paper or a research paper a comment paper a perspective there's a wide range be sure of what you want to write early in the process of choosing a research topic and here is why that is very important for example a review paper a review paper basically synthesizes and summarizes existing literature on a particular topic instead of presenting original research findings it provides an overview of the current state of knowledge identify key themes or trends, evaluates the quality and significance of previous studies, and if you're planning to write a review paper, you will need to choose a topic that has sufficient amount of existing research to analyze and discuss. But if you choose a research paper, a research paper presents original research findings based on, on data collected either through experiments, surveys, observations, or other methods which are scientifically are proven or acceptable. Unlike a review paper, a research paper aims to contribute new knowledge or insights into the field. If you're planning to write a research paper, you will need to choose a topic that leads itself to empirical investigations and data collection. After you identify what type of paper you are going to write, you need to explore existing literature, be it for a review paper or a research paper. Conduct a preliminary review of existing literature related to each potential area. Look for recent studies, academic papers, relevant books to gain an understanding of what has already been researched and what are the research gaps or unanswered questions. And I'm going to give you a tip. One tip is if you're looking for a um, research gap and you don't want to do a lot, go for review papers and you search to the end, you will usually have an area where they put future perspectives. You could start from there. The next thing is you need to consider the significance and the relevance of your study. You need to evaluate what is the significance, what is the importance of the potential topic you're looking forward to study. Ask yourself why is the topic is important, how is it going to contribute to the field of study or broaden academic community. Consider factors such as social impacts, practical implication, potential for innovation. The next thing to do is access flexibility. Assess, ask yourself how accessible or how is it feasible for each potential topic in terms of available resources, time constraint, accessibility to data, or research participants. Consider whether you have the necessary skills, expertise, and support to pursue the research in a particular area. For example, if you want to carry out a research on environmental pollutants, like for example, right now I'm researching on microplastics within Africa, there are no, to the best of my knowledge, there are no um, sufficient instruments which can enable you to be able to analyze the microplastic content within each soil component or groundwater component or any environmental component. So because of the limitation of instruments, you carrying out um, or a student requesting or insisting on carrying out a study on environmental uh, microplastic contaminants in Africa will almost be very 
unfeasible but if it is in a developed country for example korea which has all these instruments it will really be quite feasible for you to conduct research in these areas another example is for example when i was doing my bachelor's degree i used to i was pretty much interested in analyzing hydrogen um, carbon nitrogen in certain components within soils within um, Cameroon and Ethiopia and anal analysis within these parts of the country were pretty much feasible but very difficult and time constraining time consuming but when I came to Korea and I found out that to analyze same amount of com same amount of components within soil samples could take you basically just one hour lastly seek feedback and guidance you need to get feedback and guidance from peers from mentors or advice advisors on a list of potential topics discuss your ideas with others in your field to gain different perspectives and insights and then consider their feedback in relation to your interests goals and the feasibility of studies one thing for sure is that junior researchers sometimes they might feel that your idea can be stolen in science science we often have the saying that science doesn't lie so i could discuss an idea with you but if you decide to, to maybe still my idea you might not be able to execute it the same way i plan on doing it so the idea of stealing ideas is almost it is there but almost not there so feel free to share with your peers with your mentors and advisors and get their opinion about it in summary these are the important things you need to focus on after formulating your ideas and deciding on the topic you will write about it is time to build your research plan and put more actions into it so i'm going to explain this in a couple of steps the first step is develop a research plan you need define a clear research objectives and questions determine the scope and the boundaries of your studies create a timeline aligning key milestones and deadlines of each state of the research process identify the resources for example the fundings the equipment the data that you need to conduct the research in some cases you might also think of the other people you might want to collaborate with in order for your research to, to advance secondly you need to conduct a comprehensive literature review which requires gather and review relevant literature which is relevant to the chosen topic, your topic, summarize key findings, identify gaps or unresolved issues in the literature and formulate research hypotheses or questions based on your review. And then keep little records of the sources you consult for later references. And then third, designing your study as for research. This is specifically for research papers. You determine the appropriate research methodology, the study design based on your research objectives and questions. For example, um, if you're studying, if your study is on soils, you need to determine how many soil samples you're going to collect from the field from a particular, how many soil samples are you going to collect for a particular depth. For example, if you're collecting from zero to 100 centimeters below ground level, below ground, how many soil samples you're going to collect. That's very important. You need to develop data collection tools, surveys, interview protocols if applicable in some cases you need to obtain any necessary approvals for example institutional review board approval for human subjects if that is research that concerns human subjects or uh, before proceeding with your collection of data samples or you're going to, if you're going to collect samples from a particular site you need to get approval from the people on that site notifying them you're going to be collecting samples you don't just bomb into someone's property and collect samples in some countries it could lead to fight in other countries it could lead you know to result to a very harmful thing so it's very important fourthly collecting and analyzing data for especially for research papers you need to collect think about how you're going to collect data according to the research plan the methodology you've designed clean and organize the data analyze the data using appropriate statistical models or quantitative models depending on the nature of your study interpret your results analysis in relation to your research questions or, hypo uh, or hypothesis and the fifth thing is the writing and revising the paper begin by drafting your paper it should be in line to the structure and the guidance appropriate to the to the top to the journal you are targeting especially for review or research so you, while drafting make sure you follow their guidelines because your paper might just get rejected if you do not follow their guidelines they are mind you there are over 100 journals and each has its own unique guidelines and then when um then you write sections such as 
the introduction, the literature review, the methodology for research papers, this for research paper results, discussion and conclusion. For you need to revise and refine your draft based on feedbacks from your peers, your co-authors, your mentors, your advisors, and then edit your paper for clarity, coherent, adherent for formatting and citation and guidelines. After you're finished writing and revising your paper, you can decide to publish it. You now decide which journal you want to publish your paper. Once you decide, there are a number of steps you follow when you submit your paper. The first step is submission. So once you have submitted or completed your research paper or review paper or any format of paper you've written, you will submit it to a journal for consideration. And most journals have an online submission system where you upload your manuscript along with any supplementary material such as figures, tables, and supporting data. And then some journals may require you to format your manuscript according to their specific guidelines before submission. The next step is editorial assessment. So the editor-in-chief or his assistant, upon receiving your manuscript, the journal editorial team will conduct an initial assessment to ensure that your manuscript meets the journal scope and format formative requirement. And if your manuscript passes the initial screening, it will be assigned to an editor who will oversee the peer review process. And also within this stage too, they're going to check on plagiarism to be sure that your manuscript is original and it's not been published elsewhere or you've not copied someone's. Next step is a peer peer review process and the editor will select the appropriate appropriate reviewers. Most typically experts in your field will evaluate evaluate will be sent a manuscript to evaluate for the quality, the validity and the significance of a review. And then the pre the peer reviewers will provide feedback on your manuscript highlighting strength, weaknesses and making recommendations for revision. And then the number of rounds of peer reviews can vary depending on the journal and the complexity of revision required. The next thing is the editorial does the peer review, the editorial will now get the comments from the reviewers and after receiving feedback from peer reviewers, the editor will make a decision on your manuscript based on the reviewer's comments and their own assessment. So possible decisions include it could be acceptable or acceptance with minor revision, acceptance with major revisions, or in some cases, rejection. So if the revisions are are requested, you will typically be given a deadline to address the reviewer's comments and submit a revised manuscript. And most often, usually two weeks, some journals give two weeks, some give one month, so it all depends on the journal. But I think most journals will give you two weeks, that's approximately 40 days. So after that, though you revise and make sure you do revise all the comments without skipping any comment. So in the publication process, you do not omit any comment. So once you're done with that, you'll send for the final decision and once you've submitted your revised manuscript the editor will review it to ensure that the revision adequately addresses the reviewer's concerns or problems or questions and if the editor is satisfied with the revisions your manuscript will be accepted for publication otherwise further revisions will be requested and then at this stage you may need to complete any additional paperwork by the journal such as copyright transfer agreements or disclosure forms and then the next thing after this will be proofreading and publication. So after acceptance, you will receive proofs of your manuscripts for final proofreading and corrections. So once, once any remaining issues are addressed, your paper will be published in the upcoming issues or made available online ahead of print. So some of you might be wondering how much time it takes from submission to acceptance. However, to provide a general idea, the time from submission to acceptance for a research paper can range from a few weeks, a few months, to a year or more. Some journals aim to provide initial decisions within a specific time frame, such as some journals, a decision like the first decision from the editor, some journals might take maybe just four days, five days, some could take two months, three months, but this can vary widely depending on the journal's policies and the work of a lot. If you found this video very helpful, helpful to you, Please don't forget to like it, to share, to subscribe for more value tips. Thanks for watching. Best of luck on writing and publishing your paper. Bye.